Hello friends, welcome to another episode of my talks. This one's about sleep. By now you've already heard my introductory uh, message about sleep and you've learned about the different stages of sleep, non-REM sleep and REM sleep. Now we're going to enter into the subject of how sleep affects diseases. I wanted to start with Alzheimer's disease. And by the way, throughout these lectures you'll notice that I'm referring to my computer a little bit because I've written extensive notes on the subject of sleep both for these lectures as well as for my own reference. And uh, sometimes I have to go back to these notes to ensure that I'm getting all the points across that I want you guys to know about. Anyway, as everyone knows, Alzheimer's disease is one of the most terrifying diseases that we face in, uh, in, in the West. People often say that they're more afraid of Alzheimer's disease than they are of cancer or heart disease. And the reason is because of the, the change it uh, causes in the human condition. So when we talk about uh, in the longevity field, health span, you know, improving longevity, but also a quality of life through health. One of the things we're most concerned about avoiding is Alzheimer's disease. Uh, people with certain genetic polymorphisms are even more at risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. And especially those people would like to know how to prevent it. So this video may be a little bit useful in showing how sleep and Alzheimer's disease interact. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease uh, develops out of uh, problems with two proteins. One is called a beta amyloid, which uh, is a toxic uh, uh, 42 amino acid uh, peptide that aggregates in the brain and forms what are called uh, beta amyloid plaques. Um, usually the motor cortex and the visual cortex are not affected by these plaques, but they are particularly severe in an area called the medial prefrontal cortex. That's the area that uh, new age people call the third eye, right? And uh, it's quite significant because well, we'll get into it in a second. Now, tau proteins are microtubule bound proteins that characteristically form what are called tau tangles uh, in the brain. Uh, now, tau proteins are not as well as understood as beta amyloid proteins. So we don't really know as much about it. But what we do know is that they disrupt microtubules from transporting metabolites, lipids, and mitochondria across synapses in the brain. Now let's talk about the brain's sewage system. Your body has a sewage system, a, a, a system to, do, to get rid of waste called the lymphatic system. Your brain doesn't have one. I mean, your brain doesn't have a lymphatic system. What it has, what we call it, a glymphatic system. The glymphatic system is uh, developed by glial cells, which shrink during deep sleep, that is stages three and four of non-REM sleep. Uh, so much so, they, sl they shrink by about 60%, so much so that they increase the interstitial space in the brain, allowing cerebral spinal fluid to wash through the brain. In fact, cerebral spinal fluid uh, increases by about 10 to 20% in the brain during these periods of deep non-REM sleep um, when the glial cells shrink. So you can think of it as like the glial cells shrink, allowing this fluid to come through the brain and clear out uh, waste. And one of the most important things it clears out are amyloid, uh, beta amyloid proteins. In fact, extracellular beta amyloid is cleared out at double the rate uh, during deep sleep than it is uh, in waking hours. And if clearance is limited by a lack of deep sleep or interrupted sleep or less deep sleep, uh, toxic beta amyloid will build up in the brain. Now, a side note, when deep sleep is limited in uh, sleep scientist studies by using like a light noise that is barely perceptible, by the way, if you have like a light noise that's not, per you can, you're able to sleep, but there's a little bit of a noise in the background, your deep sleep will be thoroughly limited. And if it is limited in sleep scientist studies, what they find is that cerebral spinal fluid, which they get with spinal taps, which nobody wants to get, I don't know how they convince their test subjects to get this, to do this, but they find that uh, beta amyloid uh, buildup is increased by about 30% in those that have less deep sleep due to the noise. So something to consider. Now the thing about Alzheimer's disease uh, and sleep is that they interact. Now there's a, there's a, there's a field called um, systems engineering, uh, which is something I was really into in graduate school which describes things called positive feedback loops. Positive feedback loops are a situation where you have something that influences something else and that thing in turn influences the first thing so that they can increase themselves in a non-linear fashion. 
And this is what happens with Alzheimer's disease and uh, deep sleep. So the, the medial prefrontal cortex of the brain is uh, the CEO of the brain. And it is what is responsible for generating those delta waves of deep sleep that we discussed in the first uh, segment of this uh, talk. Now, that is also the same part of the brain that is most affected by amyloid plaque buildup in Alzheimer's disease. Now, it was found that the severity of amyloid plaque buildup in the medial prefrontal cortex of the brain in Alzheimer's patients was directly correlated to their lack of deep sleep. So the more amyloid plaque buildup they had in the medial prefrontal cortex, the less deep sleep they had. And the less deep sleep they had, they were shown to be more forgetful. So Alzheimer's disease affects the medial prefrontal cortex, which in turn affects sleep, which in turn affects the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease like memory and learning issues and forgetfulness. This creates a positive feedback loop. So the, 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 the less deep sleep you get during your life, the more amyloid plaque buildup you get. The more amyloid plaque buildup you get, the more you get it in the medial prefrontal cortex. The less deep sleep you're able to produce and there, therefore, the more amyloid plaque buildup develops in your brain. So basically, sleep is one of the most crucial tools you can use in your personal defense strategy against Alzheimer's disease. And specifically, you wanna be paying attention to those third and fourth stages of non-REM sleep. That, those are the stages of sleep that are highest in duration during, during the first half of your sleeping night. And if you sleep late, no matter how long you sleep, because of circadian rhythms, you're going to experience less deep sleep during the night, meaning you're going to get more of that amyloid plaque buildup that we all get it to some degree uh, in your lifetime. So guys, beware about how you sleep, when you sleep, and uh, look out for the next uh, clip, which will be about cardiovascular disease and sleep. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, please like and subscribe to the video and visit my website at leoandlongevity.com. Thank you.